Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Who knows when you're watching this? Um, but anyway, welcome to a beautiful mountain up here in Slovenia. Um, me and Marie are currently in Slovenia. We're just about to head over to Austria. We've just done the highest mountain, Triglav. We, we are almost coming to that, but we got within 150 meters. Uh, we were up in the mountain range to the east of Lul Lul Ljubljana, which is the capital city. And we've got a couple of uh, evenings planned here in mountain huts. I've been asked a lot of questions about what the kit I'm wearing, how I've got the confidence to do what I'm doing because I'm not a climber, I'm not a mountaineer, this is not a professional setup, this is just me learning over the years uh, through experience, through trial and error, through asking questions, through going with friends. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of a background to what kit I wear and basically how I've gone from like a dog walker of a weekend to now sort of not climbing mountains but the sort of mountaineering. So the difference for me for mountaineering and climbing, the, the the way I look at it is climbing, you have harnesses on and you're going up like almost a vertical face and all you are there to do is to climb a section. Whereas I prefer what I like to deem as sort of mountaineering, which is the, which is the, the art of going about safely around the mountain. So it's a bit more exploratory than it is just climbing in my eyes. And I enjoy it a lot more because you travel bigger distances and you think on your feet with all the safety and the way you're getting around. So this, this video is for you. So if you're if you've perhaps done Snowden once, perhaps done a bit of dog walking, you want to take it, take them on some winter walking, I'll sort of, uh, I'll show you what kit I use for that. So first thing of all, I want to talk through the routes. So there's a plethora of maps online available um, that you can get. So you can either get like a paper copy, you know, physical paper copy, or you can use stuff in England like the OS or the Solway map, or you can get um, fat maps, or you can, there's honestly heaps. Just if you want to find the best one for you, Google it. Everyone likes slightly different things, so that's fine. There's a lot of electronic stuff. For me though, when I'm doing a big mountain, I prefer to have a paper copy because you can't trust your get signal, you can't trust your phone will die. So paper copy in when you're doing a proper mountain is, is always for me, is the best thing to do. If you're looking to go from like um, a summer walk and a summer hike, let's say, to then a winter, winter hike, first of all, for me, it's all about building the confidence and, and doing it a few times. The best way that I ever started was doing a route that I'd done in summer, so I was familiar with it, so I understood it. So for example, Snowdon. Snowdon's fairly central of the UK. Quite a lot of people do Snowdon. It's not that hard. In winter, it's, it's not that hard, but you may need winter equipment. You know you're near civilization, so it's a good starter. Um, so I'd recommend doing something like a Ben Nevis, a Snowdon, um, a Scarfell Pike, a Helvellyn, something that perhaps you've done before, but you want to now take on in the winter. So first of all, I'll talk you through some of the kit that I wear in terms of physically wearing it. So. First of all, in terms of what I'm wearing now, I'm wearing like Hagloff walking trousers. Jeans are a no-go because anything like jeans or cotton, as soon as you get damp and sweaty, they won't dry. So a pair of Hagloff like walking trousers I'm wearing, they'll be water repellent, not completely waterproof, water repellent, um, but they also quick dry as well. I'm also wearing a pair of leggings or long johns underneath me. Again, not cotton ones, but like sports type. <clears throat> Again, for my top, it's all about layers. So for anything outdoorsy, You've got, to, you've got to think like you're an onion and you've got lots of layers on. So if you just have one big jacket and let's say a t-shirt underneath, as soon as you start getting hot climbing, you take your big jacket off and then you're freezing because you've got a t-shirt on. So it's all about the layers. So at the moment, I'm wearing uh, a skin layer, like a sports layer underneath, which is long sleeve. I've then got a, uh, a sporty t-shirt on. I've then got a uh, down jacket, but it's a gilet jacket, but I'm swapping that with a, another down jacket, but this is like a 50-50 because it's got um, like flexible breathable layer underneath and then I put a shell over the top so for me waterproof should always be a shell and what I mean by that is there's no insulating value on this this is purely um, a waterproof layer now again you can get different types of this and this video is not for this you can get stuff that's really flexible and really um, really good for breathability but then will be not so good waterproof wise and then you get stuff that's really good waterproof but they're not flexible this is more my flexible waterproof one that i'm wearing today don't forget when you're in the mountains <coughs> excuse me um the weather can change really quickly so one of the things you always always need to check and we check probably three times a day even though we're up in the mountain now is the weather forecast something like don't use like a bbc is a bit too generic something like accuweather um is a fantastic tool or there's even some some mountain tops that have specific um weather stations that you can then hack into so and on that note always take gloves and <laughs> somebody else was saying you know take spare gloves and then spare gloves of the spare gloves i've just got one really good set of black diamond gloves i won't lose these so i don't need spares because i love them um 
Right, in terms of then kit that I use then for, so we talked about a route, we talked about uh, the kit aware. Next thing to talk about is really you always want to be in pairs because if anything goes wrong, you always have somebody to work your safety aspects with. So for example, I've got Marie behind the camera now and before we even went up one mountain, we went into a forest, we found like a bit of a boulder and we just practiced some B-lane techniques, some safety techniques and then some scenarios of, right, a dog's down there or you need to repel down here or how do you, I'm in the pickle, shouting up, tie yourself on. So we did a bit of like safety work between us. There's a load of like YouTube videos on there, on the internet about how to, you know, take a rope, how to form like a figure of eight loop and then how to connect that through to a harness and back through there's loads of stuff on the internet so you can have a look at that and build your confidence through all that kind of stuff um next thing then is a physical kit that i use for winter walk walking specifically so first of all on the boots so something that marie wears is like what i deem as a proper walking boot so it's a flexible sole it's something like maybe a berg house or something like that it's pretty waterproof um, and a good all-round boot the difference with my like mountaineering boot is the sole is really stiff so Marie's boot you'll be able to flex it which means it's a softer sole it's better for longer periods of time but for my boot it's not comfortable over long periods of time because the sole is so bloody hard but what it means is when I come up something like this say this little rock without my crampons on Marie is putting a lot of effort to just like pull her up pull her heel up whereas what I can do is I can put a lot of weight in my toe and the sole then acts as a, an extra support so if you do if you do take on the next level of mountaineering something like a mountaineering boot like this is really good the benefit of a, a, a proper mountaineering boot like this what i'm wearing is scarpers hello birdie um is it's got this like heel attachment for this type of crampon so you can get two type of well you can get a few types of crampon but i'm talking about the proper crampons not like the little chain ones for like icy pavements these are proper like mountaineering ones um so these are grizzle ones i think they are um they have like a uh, toe attachment and then they have what is like a fixed clip at the back and then you like lace them up if you still want crampons you don't want to spend money on boots that's absolutely fine marie has in that situation and she's got a, a type of boot that doesn't have the heel attachment and the crampon um like sort of laces up at the back so there's two pack crap two crap crampons for a mountaineering boot the clip on or a normal boot that then can, can grab it on the back there. So don't worry. Um, another bit of kit that you'll need um, before you take the next sort of jump to harnesses is an ice axe. So again, lots of different types of ice axes. This is a walking ice axe. And the reason you can tell that is because it's got a sh straight shaft. So you can use this sort of like a walking stick, which is pretty good. Um, this one, the um, reason I like these is because it's got a bit of a loop as well. So you can really get in there. Um, Again, if you want to know how to use these specifically, how you should be using these, loads of YouTube videos out there. This is just a brief overview. Of I, my kit, um, another bit of kit, obviously you want to be taking is a uh, helmet. Now, two, two reasons you want to be wearing a helmet more than anything is if you fall and you whack your head and then you cause problems for the person above that's acting your safety, as in you're passed out or you smash your head open, that's going to cause a pickle. So the idea is the helmet, even if you fall, saves you or gives you a better chance of supporting your head to be awake and compass mentors to then help with the rescue if something happens. The other reason it helps you is from the stopping any falling rock. So when we're sort of climbing or doing sections together, sometimes we're, cock we're kicking rocks off at each other, but we've got, we've got helmets on just to stop those. They're not boulders, but they're bits that would cut your head probably so. Helmet is good. You can... Someone said to me yes yesterday, actually, any helmet is better than no helmet. So I like that sort of terminology. This is actually more like a BMX, uh, sort of downhill biking helmet. I like that because I'm gonna use it for my bike, I'm use skiing, ski touring, climbing. I can use it for everything. Okay, it's not a specific climbing helmet because the gaps are slightly too big, but for me, this does the job wherever, across everything. Um, so finally then, the, the color bits of kit then is a harness and a rope. So this rope is a 30 meter walking rope and the two types of walking is there's a, the two types of rope, there's a climbing rope and a walking rope. The walking rope are static, so when you pull it really hard, it's just static like a normal rope would be. Um, a dynamic rope is something like a climbing rope, so if you fall, it does elasticate slightly so you don't get the snap. Um, this is a 30 meter, I think this is a 10 mil, something like that. Uh, I carry it everywhere. It's either on my bag or it's round somewhere like that. When I'm, when I'm on the mountain, going between section to section so I don't have to take my bag off, I can just get on with it and start using it straight away. Um, harness, so I've got a Petzl harness. It's pretty good. I've also got a lightweight ski touring harness. 
um, that is just for when you're doing like long ski touring days and you don't need something quite as heavy duty as what we're doing now, but we're, we're quite heavy duty. This is just a normal climb, climbing harness. Um, I've also got a number of attachments that I use as like mandatory stuff. So I've got a couple of carabiners that I usually have on. I've got some quick draws. Uh, I've got a little rappel, belay device, and then I've got a sling. In fact, all of these I have actually used today um, re rescuing or helping out those French guys that didn't have the kit with them. So they've all come in handy. Um, quick draws is are for use for like sport climbing, but I seem to deploy them in other little aspects. So even though that's used for one specific thing, you can still turn them to a bit of everything. The sling is really good. So for example, let's say we found ourselves at this section um, and we need to come down here. What I can do is I can put the, the strap, something like that, put a carabiner on end, and then that's my then safety for coming down there. Uh, the B lane device is pretty good because it means you could safely B lay or let somebody rappel down below you or the dog or you can rappel down yourself so that is basically a real overview I just want to give you like a, a, a real overview and a flavor of it um, without going into depth so if you do want to so for example yeah okay you, you're taking the first you're taking on your first challenge you're gonna do Snowden in the winter right I'm gonna get some um, gonna get some crampons now go watch some proper YouTube videos solely about different types of crampons and choose that and then same again, ice axe, you can spend a million quid, you can spend five quid. Go and do, go and find a YouTube that is specifically about the ice axes. So um, hope that's given you a bit of a flavor. I'll probably do more of these for more of the activities we do. So for example, a bit of paddleboarding, a bit of ski touring. I'll give you a bit of an overview and flavor for how I've got to how I've got here, what kit I use and a bit of advice. So, um, but remember, always be safe. And of the three places or two or three places we've climbed so far, so three climbs we've done so far, two of which we, we have decided to turn around from the top and not summited. Not because, well, just, just for really safety and weather and light and energy and snacks and food. So don't, don't ever set out to go and summit Snowden. And if the weather's not right, always, be, always just take, take the view that you've had, the, had enough out of the day and you're just gonna be safe because there's a lot of people that maybe are not that experienced that get rescued off the mountains. Um, because they've not made the right decision at the right time. So a few times we've stopped, roped up, because we might not, we didn't even need to, but we just did it, and a few times we turned around. So be safe out there. Any questions, let me know, um, and I'll try and help out as much as I can. Um, obviously, this is all my take on it. I'm not an expert climber, I'm not an expert mountaineer. I just want to give you guys a bit of a flavor. Ciao. Um, forgot to mention it at the time, but uh, I've just sort of come up 30 meters of the piece just to um, just have a look at this. So a good way of getting into mountaineering is where I got into transitioning between sort of hiking into climbing um, is through Via Ferrata. So Via Ferrata is these fixed lines that they're put up and they're mainly all over like the Alpine scene. So if you go to the Alps, you go to the Dolomites, if you go to the Pyrenees, come down to Slovenia, they are absolutely everywhere. Um, and what it is, is you can you wear your own normal harness and you get a Via Ferrata kit, which essentially is, a, is fix your harness short bit of like safety line and then it's two small bits of rope or lines that's about half a meter long with carabiners on and then the idea is you can come up sections like this and you can be always clipped in moving up and all the way around and it's a great transition between hiking and climbing because jumping straight to climbing is difficult without getting instructed without having a, a, a competent second person there without you know guides and all this kind of stuff it's, it's quite a big jump so the way i sort of got into it and built my confidence was through via ferrata um it's a great way of just getting out there and then if you take take the via ferrata kit but then also take a little bit more um sport climbing kit or sort of general mountaineering kit like your ropes and your crampons and your ice axes then suddenly you've got this hybrid that we, we what we're doing which is a bit very ferrata in the winter but with a bit of mountaineering a little bit of climbing technique in there and it's a bit of a hybrid without going too off piece because you know i'm not an expert climber not an expert mountaineer but what I can do is be nice and safe in the mountains and uh, make the right decisions at the right time. And Via Ferrata is where I sort of dip my toe in there. So hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you soon. Ciao.